If you're a fan of good music, or really just an American in general, I don't think you need any introduction to Dolly Parton. The Backwoods Barbie has continued to serve us some of the best country music over her decades-long career, and she's managed to become one of the most beloved wholesome acts in the music industry. Besides her musical prowess, Dolly has made a name for herself as an amazing actor, philanthropist, and all-around good person, and she's done all of this while being one of the most humble and relatable people in show business. Now for many people, Dolly has always been beautiful, but while you might see her pictures and marvel at her beauty, have you ever wondered what she would have looked like back in the day? In this video, we'll explore taking a trip down memory lane to see how this icon grew into the woman that she is today. Join us as we have a look at the life of Dolly Parton. Dolly's Parents now, of course, it wouldn't be possible to talk about Dolly Parton and who she is today without mentioning her lovely parents. Dolly is the daughter of A.V. Lee Caroline Owens and Robert Lee Parton. The two had met in the early 30s and eventually tied the knot in 1939, when A.V. was only 16 years old. In the years that would follow, the two raised 12 children on their own, six boys and six girls, one of whom turned out to be Dolly. As a mother, Avi had actually been one of the major influences on Dolly's career. She supported her family in everything they did, and always had creative ways of making all her children feel special. In general, she was the quintessential mother, tending to everyone's needs while bringing a sense of love and happiness to the home. Avi Lee sadly passed away in 2003 at the age of 80, but Dolly immortalized her memory in her hit song, Code of Many Colors. The song tells of the story of Avi Lee sewing her young daughter a winter coat out of tiny scraps of fabric when the family had little to no money to spare. Still though, the gift itself weighs more than just an ordinary coat. It was an important lesson in seeing the value of what you have, regardless of how seemingly little it might be. And that lesson ended up being Dolly's overall life philosophy. As for Robert, he was the family patriarch who Dolly described as being able to provide for the family by the bend of his back and the sweat of his brow. Robert worked as a sharecropper in the mountains of East Tennessee before eventually starting his own small tobacco farm. However, despite his best efforts, the family had never quite enough money, especially since there were 12 kids to feed. In fact, when Dolly was born, Robert was so poor that he couldn't afford to pay the doctor who had delivered her. So, he gave the good doctor a sack of cornmeal instead. Regardless of their poverty, the Parton household was full of love, and that's one thing that Dolly has always carried with her. She recalled how the children would take turns rubbing Robert's weather-beaten hands with corn silk lotion, as well as how Robert always supported all of his children, no matter what career they chose. He was one of the first people to encourage her to become a musician, and I think it's safe to say that decision turned out to be the right one. 5-Year-Old Dolly With that being said, let's now take a look at this adorable picture showing Dolly at the tender age of 5. Although it's not certain where the picture was taken, it was most likely in the place that she was born. The photo isn't necessarily the highest of quality, but then again, this was the 50s, when picture technology was still in development. Still though, Dolly's ability to always find the camera lens should probably give you a glimpse into the type of star that she would grow up to become because even from a young age, she was an absolute natural. The picture also appears to show what seems to be Dolly and a few of her siblings. We're aware that she was the fourth of 12 children, so it appears that she had two other siblings that weren't taken in this shot. The Humble Beginnings Like many people who achieve superstardom and immediately blossom, Dolly didn't necessarily come from money. I mean, we already explained the fact that her family wasn't well-to-do, but things were pretty rough for her from the start. As Dolly would explain, her family grew up in a cabin with just one bed. And if you think about it, a family of 14 people living in a one-bedroom cabin, that was pretty rough. In an interview from back in 1978, Dolly would explain that many of her siblings would literally pee on her almost every night. She added that they basically slept three to four in a single bed, and that this was pretty much the only form of comfort that they knew. Nevertheless, things began to turn around a bit when Dolly began her career. With the little money that she made, and with the help of her parents and siblings, the family was soon able to get out on top and improve their living conditions a bit. In a way, Dolly's humble upbringing brought more of a brand for her. 
It's helped her become more stable, and it's provided a way for her to remain humble in everything that she does. If you ask anyone who's worked with Dolly, they would attest to how much of a loving, warm, and down-to-earth person she really is. Besides that, the fact that the Parton family wasn't so wealthy meant that they pretty much had to grow up self-sufficient. With the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee behind them, the family learned to till the land, raising chickens and growing their own fruit, as well as beans, potatoes, corn, and more. For meat, Robert would hunt squirrel, groundhog, and other animals that were around the area. So, the family pretty much grew and caught whatever they ate, and most times, they would only go to the store for essentials like sugar and coffee. That way, they could save up as much money as possible on feeding and regular expenses. Nine-year-old Dolly For our next image, we'll be looking at a much more clear one that shows Dolly sitting and posing in front of the camera. This solo image shows her in what appears to be a striped shirt with a charm bracelet of some sort adorning her arm. It's not clear if the shirt itself is black and white or if it just takes that color due to the camera's default photo resolution. Another interesting feature in the shot is the signature Dolly Parton smile. Looking at her composure in the clip, you kind of get where the beautiful bright-eyed smile that she's become all too famous for came from, and then you have that hair. In this clip, Dolly sports what appears to be a short, simple, and adorable hairdo. It's definitely a far cry from some of the more outlandish hairstyles that she's been known to try out. Looks like Miss Parton had yet to find her style back then, but it also makes you pause to think about how one's own style and signature look can evolve over the years. Start of a career From a very young age, Dolly always knew that she wanted to be a singer, and when she was just five years old, she had written her very first song titled Little Tiny Tasseltop. Here's a bit of a backstory. As Dolly put in her 2020 book, Dolly Parton Songteller, she had loved to sing as soon as she could speak in full sentences. However, the issue was that she couldn't actually read or write. Still though, her desire to sing was so strong that she'd literally make a song about anything, and when she was five years old, her parents made her a beautiful doll. It was about a corncob doll that her mother had made and put a little dress on and put corn silk tussles on for her hair. Daddy made eyes with the fire poker from the fireplace, but she did love that little doll. So as you'd imagine, Dolly made a song about the doll. Her mother, who was learned, heard her sing a couple of times and decided to write the lyrics down. Just like that, Dolly Parton's first song was written at the age of five. In her book, she would write about how she expressed herself and her feelings through writing, and she was sure that what she was thinking was that Tasseltop had to have a song about her. And so she wrote the song because it was the only friend that she had. She had big brown eyes and corn silk hair and wrote about how the doll had made her smile. Whatever feelings that she was experiencing about the doll came out in the song. Now you may be wondering how she had managed to come up with such a beautiful song at such a young age, but she was actually quite the musical prodigy. Apart from her composition skills, she began playing the guitar when she was seven. Thanks to the help of her mother and her uncle who were musically inclined, she got a little bit of early mentoring as well. And the rest became history. Away from her first song, Dolly also got a bit of inspiration from her life as she went ahead to record one of her most popular tracks, The Code of Many Colors. With the typical winters in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee easily hitting chilly temperatures, staying warm and cozy in the region became a chore all on its own. And you can imagine how challenging it must have been for the Partons, who had barely enough to get by with. But as said before, survival was in the family's DNA, and to cater to her children, Dolly's mother, a skilled seamstress, made a coat that could help the cold stay away. This coat would go on to inspire the popular song, which has gone on to sell millions of copies and is now one of the singer's all-time best-selling tracks. This could kind of become a theme. Many of Dolly's life experiences indeed inspired her song, and she leaned heavily upon them. Perhaps this was why Dolly had become so popular so quickly. Her songs told stories of everyday life in the country, and many people found them very easy to relate with. A Teenage Dolly with a little bit of her career now starting, we'll get back to checking out some of the other photos of Dolly. Here, we see a 14-year-old Dolly in 1960 posing for yet another solo photo. The short hair that she sported in the precious clip seems to still be part of her personality, although she switched up the striped shirt for a more natural look. Despite the fact that her hair looks the same, it's pretty obvious that Dolly is beginning to transition from being a teeny little girl 
to becoming a young adult woman, and the adult version of Dolly that we know and love is starting to show. Now, I'm not sure where this picture was taken, but considering how official it looked, it would most likely have been a school portrait of some sort. Dolly's Debut It was a pretty fortunate thing that Dolly had discovered her love and talent for singing at an early age, and after she and her mother wrote her first song, her uncle Bill Owens would gift her her guitar, and she pretty much set to begin performing. Dolly's first gig was to sing on local television and radio programs in the East Tennessee area, and by the age of 10, she had already made several appearances on the Cass Walker Show, which aired in Knoxville, Tennessee. At 13, Dolly signed with Gold Brand Records, a small record label in Louisiana, and she appeared at the Grand Old Opry where she even performed for the legendary Johnny Cash. After she graduated from high school in 1964, she then moved out of her hometown and into the big city of Nashville. Upon arrival, she would sign with Combine Publishing, working mostly as a songwriter. She then formed a partnership with her uncle, and they both wrote several top-charting hits. Some of Dolly's best work at that point would include tracks like Put It Off Until Tomorrow and The Company You Keep, two top ten songs that were performed by Bill Phillips. She also wrote Fuel to the Flame for Skeeter Davis, a song which hit number 11 on the charts. Country Pivot Although Dolly had found some success with her singing and songwriting career, she would soon find an early challenge. In 1965, she signed with Monument Records at the age of 19, and to get the signing, she was pitched as a bubblegum pop singer and released a few singles. None of them did really well. In fact, the only track that even hit the charts didn't even crack the Billboard Hot 100. At that point, Dolly discussed her desire to switch to country music. However, her record label would resist because they believed her unique and high-pitched voice was much better suited for the pop genre. A year later, Put It Off Until Tomorrow hit the charts, scoring Bill Phillips and Dolly, since she wrote it, at a number six spot on the country charts. Monument Records would finally give in and allow her to record country songs, and this would be the beginning of her real singing career. Dolly's first country single, Dumb Blonde, peaked at the number 24 spot on the charts in 1967, and the next, titled Something Fishy, went as high as 17. It was clear that she was destined to sing country songs at this point, and her first studio album, Hello, I'm Dolly, became an instant classic. Dolly at 19 and if you want to see what Dolly looked like while she was making a name for herself and hopping on the Billboard charts, well, I've got you covered. Yep, that's the Dolly that we know and love starting to emerge. You see the outlandish hair with the high wattage smile, and you just know that that's Dolly. I mean, look at that hair. I'm not sure what it is, but it seems like the transition to full-blown country star pretty much signaled the beginning of her affection for luxurious hair. Just imagine how much hairspray she'd have to have to put it in that thing to make it so thick. But apart from the hair, Dolly also communicated that luxury, charm, and warmth through her smile. Bright and never fake, she seemed to live like she knew the cameras were always on her. And to be honest, she wouldn't entirely be wrong if she thought that. At this point, she had already pretty much become a huge figure in the national music scene. And everyone pretty much wanted to look like the Backwoods Barbie. Leaving the Nest Following the release of Hello, I'm Dolly, it was obvious that Dolly's time with Monument Records was at an end. She eventually left the label she had called home for many years and signed on to join country music entertainer Porter Wagner on his weekly syndicated program, The Porter Wagner Show, as well as many other road shows. While audiences were initially mad that Wagner had replaced Norma Jean, an initial performer, with Dolly, they soon came to love the Backwoods Barbie. Wagner also convinced his label, RCA Victor, to sign her, and she began a six-year streak of hitting top ten singles with him. Dolly and Wagner were very successful together, even being named Vocal Group of the Year in 1968 by the Country Music Association. However, her solo tracks were not quite as successful. By 1970, Wagner had convinced Dolly to record Jimmy Rogers' Mule Skinner Blues, and the record soared to number three on the charts. A year after that, she finally scored her first number one single with Joshua. The next few years were full of several chart-topping songs, ranging from Coat of Many Colors to The Right Combination and more, and Dolly became the new country music star, and the whole world would be put on notice. Full-blown Dolly Here, you get to see Dolly in her true element. 
We see a 24-year-old Dolly in 1970, and in many ways, you get the sense that this was Dolly coming into her own. Her dramatic hair and bright smile are so radiant, and you can see every piece of the Dolly that we know and love taking hold. And it became a look that pretty much made Dolly a household name. Right in so low. By 1974, Dolly and Wagner had decided to go their separate ways after a few successful years. Interestingly, Dolly recorded a song titled I Will Always Love You to commemorate the professional break. And it literally went number one. Talk about perfect timing. The song would eventually gain interest from none other than Elvis Presley, who said that he wanted to record it. Sadly, a dispute over publishing rights meant that the collaboration was never going to happen. All in all, Dolly had three solo singles hit number one in 1974, as well as one final duet with Wagner. It was like Dolly was on a rocket ship. She had a string of solo hits with her profile rising as quickly as you can imagine. However, she also decided to embark on a tricky crossover in an attempt to capture mainstream audiences beyond just country music. In 1977, Dolly would release her first self-produced project titled New Harvest, First Gathering. The album would show her versatility and prowess in pop music with covers of classics like My Girl and Higher and Higher. But while country music fans loved it, the album pretty much got mild reviews from pop fans. Following this less than satisfactory performance, she partnered with high-profile pop music producer Gary Klein, and that same year, she'd release Here You Come Again the first of her projects to sell a million copies. The album was a roaring success, topping the country charts and reaching a respectable number 20 on the pop charts. That Playboy Shoot Like every artist in her prime, Dolly was approached with the opportunity to shoot for Playboy magazine, the popular magazine that celebrates the female form. She declined several times, but eventually chose to take on the role in 1978. This would actually be one of the most pivotal points in her life. Wearing a Playboy bunny outfit, she posed for the magazine and even did a candid interview with Lawrence Grobel. This represented one of her first high-profile interviews with mainstream media, and it was kind of her coming out party. The Playboy issue was so iconic that Dolly somehow became nationally known for her iconic body, and things became so intense that scientists would name a sheep after her. Dolly the sheep was the first mammal to be cloned from another mammal's cell, the sheep was especially cloned from a cell taken from an adult ewe's mammary gland, and it was named so because of Dolly's iconic bust. It was like Dolly was on a rocket ship. She had a string of solo hits with her profile rising as quickly as you can imagine. However, she also decided to embark on a tricky crossover in an attempt to capture mainstream audiences beyond just country music. In 1977, Dolly would release her first self-produced project titled New Harvest, First Gathering. The album would show her versatility and prowess in pop music with covers of classics like My Girl and Higher and Higher. But while country music fans loved it, the album pretty much got mild reviews from pop fans. Following this less than satisfactory performance, she partnered with high-profile pop music producer Gary Klein, and that same year, she'd release Here You Come Again the first of her projects to sell a million copies. The album was a roaring success, topping the country charts and reaching a respectable number 20 on the pop charts. That Playboy Shoot Like every artist in her prime, Dolly was approached with the opportunity to shoot for Playboy magazine, the popular magazine that celebrates the female form. She declined several times, but eventually chose to take on the role in 1978. This would actually be one of the most pivotal points in her life. Wearing a Playboy bunny outfit, she posed for the magazine and even did a candid interview with Lawrence Grobel. This represented one of her first high-profile interviews with mainstream media, and it was kind of her coming out party. The Playboy issue was so iconic that Dolly somehow became nationally known for her iconic body, and things became so intense that scientists would name a sheep after her. Dolly the sheep was the first mammal to be cloned from another mammal's cell, the sheep was especially cloned from a cell taken from an adult ewe's mammary gland, and it was named so because of Dolly's iconic bust. Even more success. By 1978, Dolly had bagged her first Grammy, winning the award for Best Female Country Vocal Performance thanks to her album, Here You Come Again. She continued to have more successful hits, charting consistently on both the country and pop charts. Multiple television appearances would also mean that her visibility was growing 
so there was really no stopping her. At the same time, she decided to try her hand at movies. Her debut appearance came in 9 to 5, a 1980 film where she starred alongside Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda. The movie was a great success, proving that Dolly was more than just another singer. Her bright and warm attitude would radiate throughout every scene, and she was generally one of the best parts of the film. Pretty good considering that she hadn't had any movie experience prior to that. Dolly also composed and performed the theme song for 9 to 5, and as you would expect, it hit the number one position on both the country and pop charts. Over the past few decades, she's acted in several other films, television shows, and specials, showcasing her versatile nature as an artist. Welcome to Dollywood Even with all of the success that she had, Dolly has always been about giving back and investing in her hometown. And in 1986, she bought an interest in Silver Dollar City, a park that had opened back in 1961 and was in desperate need of rejuvenation. As part of that deal, it was renamed Dollywood when reopened later that year. And today, it's one of the biggest attractions in all of Tennessee, with over 4,000 people on its payroll. It's arguably the largest private employer in its community, and the park measures about 150 acres in land space, offering everything from roller coasters to a water park and even private shows. Dolly and Carl In May of 1966, Dolly tied the knot with local Tennessee businessman Carl Thomas Dean. The two have been married ever since, although you'd barely ever see a picture of them together. This is mostly because Carl is a notoriously private figure who shuns publicity, and he even rarely accompanies her to events. Dolly also doesn't use Carl's last name professionally, although she has stated that her passport reads Dolly Parton Dean, and that she sometimes even uses the last name when signing official documents. The two renewed their vows in 2016 to celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary, and while they don't have any children, they appear to be very happy with each other. Carl is especially popular with Dolly's family, helping to raise some of her younger siblings, nieces, and nephews, so much so that the couple has a family nickname, Uncle Peepaw and Aunt Granny. Dolly's Lasting Legacy Now there's little doubt about the fact that Dolly Parton is one of the most beloved acts in all of Hollywood, but besides that, she's also one of the most successful musicians of all time. With millions of copies of her album sold, as well as an awards list that includes multiple Emmys, Grammys, and more, she is a legend who has inspired many other artists to aspire for greatness. Several of today's top pop and country artists count her as one of their biggest influences, and her commitment to giving back to her community as much as she possibly can means that she also has endeared herself to people outside of the musical sphere. Whether you know her for her chart-topping songs, her beautiful personality, or her love of people, Dolly Parton will always be one of America's sweethearts. What kind of interesting things did you learn about Dolly Parton today? Let me know in the comment section down below. Be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so you can get more like it in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.